All right, just like the Empire guys, I'm striking back. It's Dan again. Also, you can call me the man if you want, that's fine. I'm cool with either. Today we're going to look at the idea of staying active at home, okay? Now with everything going on with isolation, check in with uh, your mates, check in with your friends, check in with your family. Give them a call, give them a text, give them a Facebook, it doesn't matter. Send something to them, to the, that way they know you're thinking about them, all right? Um, because uh, this whole isolation stuff has impacted us, some of us greatly, some of us not so much. Uh, so let's just make sure we all look after each other, we're all thinking about each other, okay? And uh, let's take care of each other. Today, we're doing the activities at home. We're going to look at a couple of exercises where I'm going to do some stretching or some mobility work if you're particularly someone working at home in a desk situation. And then the other side of it, I'm going to look at some uh, interval-based training that you can do with short, sharp uh, methods, all right? Now, the other thing is I want you to sort of check out is if you already haven't seen it already, or you might have already seen it, check out Cara's video. She has some great ideas there as well. Uh, so have a look over that also. It might be a good way to start. It could be something that you could also add in as well. Um, but uh, have a look at her videos, all right? Now, uh, going on to act, stay active at home, a lot of you have probably seen online, a lot of the, uh, probably seen a lot of the online programming going around. There's probably a lot of uh, challenges I've noticed that have popped up. So for example, a 30 day challenges um, from people in a way that they're sharing something around, which is fine, all right, that's totally cool. However, the one thing I'd stress about that is don't feel that that's exactly what you have to do, all right? Keep in mind, exercise in itself is always gonna be best for what is good for you, all right? If you like that idea of doing a 30 day challenge, uh, where you wanna say, hey, I wanna see how many push-ups I can do over the 30 days, go for it. Um, however, the one thing I would certainly stress is make sure it's, uh, do some research on the uh, technique as much as you can, ask questions, find out some other videos, find out different videos of different people's versions, of how they do the exercise, okay? Um, it doesn't mean that the person who does the one the one video means it's completely correct, okay? Uh, but also you might find that you might do the exercise in a certain way because of your mobility or whatever. So you might need to basically, let's say, okay, you're doing a push-up challenge. You probably can't do, you may not be able to do push-ups on your feet. So you might need to look up on how to do it on your knees, but by that, you can just go for it and find that you might be doing it incorrectly, which could be damaging for you down the track. Uh, but on that, you want to find someone who teaches it in a good way, saying, hey, push up on knees, this is a good way of doing it, all right? So do your research before you do that. The other side of that is, if you're not motivated to do challenges and stuff, okay, totally fine. Just make sure you're doing something that you're happy doing, that you enjoy doing, and that it is somewhat, uh, it's feasible. So what I mean is by that is, is that if you're going to schedule it in, say, right, every Monday I'm going to do this, then make sure you're consistent with that. Don't say Monday I'll do it, then three weeks later you might do a bit more, then you sort of go, oh yeah, and then two days afterwards. Try and make sure it's something that you can do consistently, okay? It doesn't have to be hard and fast straight away, all right? You can build up to it. Even, like I've said before, something is better than nothing, all right? Okay? Now on that, again, safety first, make sure anything we do today in terms of exercise is something that you can handle. If you're not sure, by all means, don't hesitate to try and get in touch with myself, Cara, okay? Or if there's another professional through that you might know, have a chat to them, all right? Anything else that's like really extreme, obviously talk to your doctor, you know, seek medical advice if something goes really astray. Um, I guess if you have any injuries or anything like that, make sure you contact physios, chiros, so on, whatever you need. All right, so safety first, first and foremost, all right? All right, so on that, we're gonna get into staying active at home. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna stretch out, we're gonna do a couple of quads. We're gonna do a little bit of the chest and shoulders, a little bit sort of together in a way, and a little bit of the back, okay? Some of the back, and then from there, we're also gonna do your forearms, particularly if you're doing a lot of typing or you find that you sort of just chilled and you saw a lot of this, this pronated internal rotation position. Um, which we find we do a lot, driving the car, computer, eating dinner. Um, a lot of the time we are in this hand position there, which in turn, a lot of the muscles that are assisting with this, even up in the chest, are just constantly in this position to the point that they just get used to and just go, okay, that's how we function. You know? So for the first few stretches, or well, the first one we're gonna do is the quad one. Okay, you can use the chair, as a base if you need to, all right? Just pop it on the side, all right? So that way you've got a point there, okay? The easiest one that we can do is, and it's easier to see from the side here, is to take, grab your foot, 
Now, if you can't do that, don't worry. What you can do here, you can pop your foot up on the desk, all right? Just bear in mind, if you do it this way, make sure you balance, okay? And you've got to allow your foot to give it a little bit of wiggle room, all right? So if you're going to go that far, that's okay, because then what you do is you simply just drop yourself down into the stretch, okay? And then bring yourself back up again. But you might find at that height, you're already stretching anyway, all right? You always have someone to help you, all right? If you need someone to help you out, just make sure they don't flip you over because you're doing the quad one, like you know, and then you over. Grab the foot. Now, what you want to do from here is you're doing two things. Now, get your balance, obviously. Grab, when you're grabbing this foot, what you're going to do here is with this hand where the foot is, you're going to pull that upwards. So as if you're pulling it towards your back or try and pull it to the base of your shoulder. And at the same time, what you're trying to do is while you're doing that, you're going to imagine that you're sort of pulling, you're trying to bring the knee back behind you, okay? So you can see I'm trying to do it like this. But as you're doing that, you'll then try and drive the leg forward at the same time. So in other words, while your knee is getting pulled back that way, you're trying to forcibly keep it pointing to the ground. So as you pull back, you'll try and drive your knee so that way you can still feel or look that's pointing to the floor as you're pulling back here. That in turn will help create the stretch. All right. Now, when you do this, hold it for a few seconds and then relax it, all right? Don't do longevity of stretch. They're finding that the, um, the original concept was hold the stretch and hold it for a while, all right? Um, where it came from, I can't tell you right now. However, they're finding that it seems to be better for us as a whole from a stretching point of view that, yes, if you're gonna stretch for a minute, certainly stretch for a minute, but break that minute up. So what I'm getting at is, do it three lots of 20 seconds. So hold for 20 seconds, relax it down, take it again, hold for another 20, and then relax again. You've still done a complete minute of stretching because that's what you want to do. But they're finding that in that sporadic time of stretching, the body goes, oh, yep, hang on, no, we want to stretch. So we will, be, we will allow ourselves to stretch, whereas they found that by doing this and holding it for so long, yeah, you probably get a similar result. But they also found that what you're creating here is a hyperextension, okay? Uh, or an overstretch, as some people might also call it. And in some ways, it's good, but they also found it was also promoting or creating weakness, which is the bad thing. Remember, our muscles are designed in ways to stabilize our bones, all right? So no muscles, we form the pile of bones. It right, doesn't matter about any other organs, we need the muscles. However, they need to have tension. One's got to pull, one's pushing, and they hold the joints in, all right? Too much of one way, for example, too tight, not good. But then it also works the other way. Too loose, not good either, all right? So you want it to be that you can still have some form of mobility, okay? But at the same time, don't go sitting there and being, okay, I've got to hold for one minute, and then find, oh, a minute doesn't sort of do anything, or so I'll do two minutes. It might mean that you might just need to do your stretch a little bit differently, or you might need to upgrade the stretch to something else. Like for example, that could be a very simple stretch, but then you might do it where you then lie down on the floor and therefore you create more of an angle or more, um, I suppose, uh, resistance is the word I'd use because you kind of still want to keep that muscle somewhat activated as you do it. You know? All right, so that's the quad. I need the leg, all right? Then the next one we're going to do is the uh, chest and shoulders. Again, I'll do it on the side, okay, because it's just a little bit easier to see. What are you going to, first of all, hands, all right? You're going to put them behind your back, all right? Cool. Those who have done time, you probably know about this. If, if you haven't, then same place. All right, hand behind your back. Then what you're going to do from here is, for your shoulder blades, you're going to aim to squeeze your shoulder blades together a bit, all right? Now, in order to do that, what helps is, as you're squeezing your shoulder blades, with your chest here, you're gonna try and push it forward. All right, so chest goes that way, shoulder blades squeeze in. As if you're trying to use your shoulder blades to pinch your spine, all right? So you're trying to sort of say, right, I'm gonna try and grab my spine with my shoulder blades, but I'm also pushing my chest forward. The reason for that is as you can see, as I do it and I pull back, I can really, you see my chest comes up, okay? But from there, as I go back with my hands, I'm also stretching through my chest and I'm also getting through my shoulders as well a little bit. All right. And the reason being we want to do that is because we want to, have, want to be able to open up the chest a bit more. 
because one thing that gets really commonly tied all the time when it comes to a lot of this is up in not so much your pec major, more of your pec minor. And also they find that your serratus or basically the muscle that's somewhat related to your core can get really tight. And as a result, it's almost like saying there's a hand here, okay? And it's pulling you in and it's doing this. And you won't notice it, but sometimes it's really prevalent in um, a lot of people who do weight training and just say they do nothing but one particular like deadlifting, for example. A lot of the time after, after a while you'll find they look someone could look like could look like this because they've been constantly there, they've done nothing but the benching and maybe some other movement and then that's it. And as a result, they're just in, all right? Now, this is not a cure, all right? But it's just handy for the desk work because what you wanna do is every five minutes or eight minutes, go there, squeeze your blades in, push the chest forward, a few seconds, and then relax. Now, the other thing you can do, is you can take a deep breath in. When you take the breath in, don't breathe into your chest. You wanna breathe into the belly, all right? Into the belly is the best spot where you wanna breathe into, not into the chest. Into the chest is actually more linked to your fight or flight syndrome. So, you know, when you're sort of like deciding, okay, if I'm gonna to have to get into a fight here, or I'm gonna run away, a lot of the time I'm going to go into the chest, and that sort of creates the body to go, hang on, why are, we, why are we in the chest here? We want to try and fill the belly, all right? So if you need to practice holding hands on the belly, breathe in, try and breathe into your hands. Now you don't have to swell it up, but just feel that your hands are rising as you breathe in and then this is also relaxation breathing as well. If you like, you feel like you're having anxiety moment or something like that, do some of like that. If you don't want to put your hands in your belly, that's fine. I mean, you, just, you can imagine like if you're in the middle of the street or something like that, you're like feeling a bit anxious, you might go, people go, what are you doing? Um, or some people might be like, hey, I know what they're doing, that's totally cool. All right. um, but what you're doing, hands behind the back, all right, chest is up, but then we're trying to breathe in the belly as much as you can. And then as you exhale, Squeeze back more. So you can use that breathing technique to help see if you can get more of a stretch. All right, same thing applies, do it in bursts. Start with a minute in total, but then try and see what happens if you do, say, two lots of three seconds. Or see what happens if you do three lots of 20 seconds. All right, don't do 10 seconds or something like that, it's a bit silly. All right, um, keep it reasonable. All right, now, if we're going to do the other one, which is the forearms, Again, because we're always doing this, all right. Hands straight out in front of you, like so, okay. Try and keep arms straight as possible, don't be bent elbow, all right. Arms out. This is one way of doing it. This will stretch more of this part of your forearm, okay. And the other one, hands down, will stretch more of the top part of the forearm, all right. So you grab, arms out, grab the fingers, pull back, all right. As you pull back, where well, you should feel the stretch or the feeling should sort of come through this part of your arm, okay? If you find you're getting your elbow or something like that, I'm not gonna say it's completely incorrect. It's just that there might be something else going on that's telling you, hang on, we're either not in the right position or we might have something else happening, okay? You might find though, with I found with some clients, is that they can sort of, if, I can, if you can see here, doing that, some of them might have to have turned the arm more outwards. So what they're doing is essentially trying to achieve this. So when they do it, you might find you need to turn. I wouldn't say you need to internally rotate because you're already, you're probably already going to be tight there. So it's more about turning outwards, okay? Now, turning outwards, it's not going to be an extreme 180, all right? So don't try and flip the arm. It could be a very minor tweak and then all of a sudden you've got the stretch, all right? Cool. Some people you see, they'll do it against the wall, where they'll put the hand on the wall, and what you do is you push, or you lean into it a bit. That's another way of doing it. If you have wrist issues or injuries or anything like that, please, if you're gonna try it, do it very cautiously and safely, okay? If it's not for you, there's other ways we can still sort of treat the forearms and stuff. We can do mobility work with massage and everything like that, okay? So we will explore that in a few more weeks, because I'll be doing a mobility video with all sorts of little gadgets, all right? Hands, the other one, hands down, okay, same thing, all right. This time what you're doing is grabbing the hand, all right, and pulling back again towards you. Again, if you want to use the wall, you can do so. Make sure it's safe for you to do so, all right. Now, again, you might find that you have to tweak it a little bit, so give yourself that minor turn, all right. But from there, just until you get that stretch, hold it for a bit, and then relax, all right. Then go again. 
you won't with this one in particular, you're not going to get to the point where you put your fingers and you can touch the arm, okay? It's never going to be like that. But what you're trying to do is just encourage that muscle to understand that we are meant to have some sort of tension and flexibility happening here. Uh, we're not completely tense, all right, but we're not completely relaxed, all right? So that's what we're aiming up with those ones, all right? Again, I'm focusing on the idea of because we're sedentary like this a lot, all right? So what you can do, you can, I wouldn't do it standing, all right? So what you do is you pop yourself down like this, all right? And then what you do from here is you're sort of going to sort of drop yourself forward, all right? So as you drop forward, find the spot, because it might take a little bit of to and fro to find where you are comfortable sort of holding the chair, okay? And what you're going to do is to drop yourself down and let yourself drop, drop, drop. Am I? Yeah. I thought for a second I just feel on camera. Anyway. So, drop yourself down and you feel it. You even might feel that you get a little bit of chest and shoulders again, okay? It's probably similar to what we are doing before, but what happens is if you then now get down to that position, drop yourself back a little bit, so sit your bum back to your feet, you'll find that you can get a little bit more into the back area, okay? And if you want, very, very slight rotation, okay? And that can help as well. When you come back up, center yourself up, come forward first, then slowly bring yourself back up. All right. Again, with that one, you can use the breathing technique. 20 seconds at a time, slowly do it. Again, you're not going to get to the point where you're going to get to the floor. Okay. It's more about just encouraging that mobility happening here, particularly again, because we're so stuck in this position. All right. Those are some of the stretches that we're going to use at the moment. All right, again, I'm going to do a mobility video hopefully in the next couple of weeks where I can show you some other stuff to do that you can even do while you're doing your office work. All right, um, but when that comes around, you'll see there'll be some awesome stuff there. All right, so for now, there's the stretches. All right, guys, quickly going through the stretching routine. All right, now the other thing I was going to mention is some people might find instead of doing while doing it also during the day at work or while they're working at home is you might find that a morning routine could be something to do as well or practice, all right? Some people might do a little bit of a couple of yoga exercises when they wake up. Some people might do some of the stretches I've shown you today, okay? Um, they find that uh, doing these uh, little exercises prior to, or just as you wake up, really, before you go have coffee, shower, and everything like that, is that it's very handy to help get the body more alert, wake up better, um, rather than like a shock awake with caffeine or something like that uh, so that might be something to look at one particular person that i would suggest to have a check out is a guy called kelly sturrock okay he's an american i think um he also had the book how to be a supple leopard all right i believe he's a chiropractor um, along with a few other qualifications he has a youtube channel which is called the ready state uh, check out his videos there's a lot of mobility a lot of stretching stuff on there he's a very knowledgeable guy um, some of them are real short, sharp ones. Some of them you might find that, hey, that really applies to me right now. Um, so give him a look. If not, if you're a reader, you can always get the book, I guess. Um, but now what we're going to do is move on to, with those who want to sort of get the heart rate up, they want to get active at home, they want to sort of go bananas for like 20 minutes or so, we're going to look at some interval training. All right, I'm going to give you an example of some of the Tabata exercises. I've got my timer here, okay? Some of you guys who attend my sessions and classes, you'll know about my timer, all right? Very famous, all right? I like using this particular timer. It's a gym boss timer, all right? The reason I like using this one is I can program all the intervals I want, how many intervals I want, how many rounds I want, top of the alarm, how often the alarm goes on, blah, 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 blah. You want to exercise to the point, or anytime you do any exercise, you want to move yourself to the point where you can get to maybe an eight or nine out of 10, and that's it. Never go 10 out of 10, all right? Um, the way I describe going 10 out of 10 is on game day, all right? So if you play sport, that's when you go 10 out of 10. But when you're training, the max you go is eight or nine out of 10, because you still have a very small amount left in the tank because you need to recover and so forth. If you flog yourself, especially doing something like this, your recovery rate just drops, and it's just almost like trying to get catch up to get yourself back up to a better standard. So when you go back to the next workout, you can hit that and then go up another level. All right, cool. So pick an exercise. Like I said today, I'm doing squats, just for the moment. I'm gonna give you an idea. So the way I do it, 10 seconds. You're gonna wait 10 seconds. And then from there, when the timer goes off, it's gonna tell me to start. Now, since I'm just doing squats, set myself up, and now I go up and down, all right? So for the next 20 seconds, 
I'm constantly doing the movement. All right. So we're up and down for 20. Hopefully this doesn't go for too long, other than 20 seconds, unless I program for 30, then I'm in trouble. Aren't I? So up and down. And then from here, what will happen is, it's very, ah, then we stop. 10 seconds. Now, the time will go up again, and that's when I start again. Then we keep repeating. All right, so that's when I'll do another 20 seconds, 10 seconds rest, 20, 10, so on. Once I hit the eight rounds, that's it. That's the four minutes done. Now, I'm gonna check that off. So, how you can apply this at home is, you can use a skipping rope. So 10 seconds rest, 20 seconds skipping. If you wanna do on the exercise bike, if you've got one at home, or if you've got one, if you go out and cycle, all right, if you wanna do that, that's fine. Now, if you don't wanna do it in a timing sense, all right, what I've seen some people do or some ideas that are out there is, um, so you're somebody who likes jogging or the bike rider. Go along, use a house. Use the block, use the house block. Go right, every, I've got two houses, chill. One house, I run. Then the next two, I walk. Next one, I run, all right? If you want to do it that way, that's fine, all right? Um, from a boxing point of view, like most of you guys, some of you guys have done with me, and you're doing in pairs, you, uh, resting 10 seconds, 20 seconds, simple, all right? Don't make it complicated, just straight, straight, straight. Rest 10 seconds, things like that, okay? That will help bring up the heart rate, heart, what is it? heart rate immensely. Um, now, if you're gonna repeat that over and over again, what I would suggest is working with the idea of something upper body first, do that, then do something lower body, okay? Try not to double it up, okay? It's not the end of the world if you do, but try not to double it up. Um, if you're going to do uh, one way of also doing it is you can do a couple of rounds and then go for your walk if you want to do that as well. All right, they find that it's actually very beneficial. Do a bit of interval training and then go off and do some steady state stuff. So you can go for a walk, go for a casual bike ride, paddle boarding, whatever. Okay, um, but that is one way that we can do some uh, high intensity stuff at home without needing a lot of equipment. You can do a lot of this body weight, okay? I'll have some exercises for you guys. I'll have some uh, ideas where you can sort of pick and choose some exercises to pair up, all right? I'll have that all written down for you.